Okay, let's take a look at the Boston Tea Party of 1773, one of the defining causes of the American Revolution. And before we get into the Boston Tea Party, it's really important to have a decent understanding of the French and Indian War. And really the short story is that Britain and France fight a war for control of North America from 1756 to 1763. Britain wins, however they went into a massive amount of debt fighting in it. And after the war, the British government decides the American colonists need to help repay that debt. So they're going to start imposing a number of taxes on the colonists. The first of which is this one, the Stamp Act of 1765. And the Stamp Act put a tax on legal documents, newspapers, and magazines, just to name a few. Now, two important points of view emerge. One, you have the British perspective. And they say the French and Indian War was fought in the colonies, so it only makes sense that the colonies should help pay for it. And the American colonies enjoy the protection and trade that goes along with being a part of the British Empire. Now, the American colonists see, thing, see things very differently. And they say, well, we never wanted to fight in the French and Indian War in the first place. And you passed this law without going to our colonial legislature. And from this, we get the famous colonial slogan, no taxation without representation. Meaning, you can't tax us unless we have representation in your British Parliament. And so we fast forward eight years to 1773, and tea has become immensely popular in England and the colonies. And the Tea Act of 1773 stated that the colonies could only buy tea from England, which was, of course, heavily taxed. The colonists disagreed, and they started smuggling in their own tea. Britain, upset with this, began to clamp down on this smuggled tea. And because the colonists were being forced to buy heavily taxed tea from a British government where they didn't have representation, a group of colonial activists called the Sons of Liberty decided to take some action. Now, the Sons of Liberty were a Boston colonial activist group that believed dearly in this idea of no taxation without representation. And the group consisted of people such as John Adams, Sam Adams, and Paul Revere, just to name a few. The Sons of Liberty were especially disgusted with the Tea Act. And their anger with the Tea Act was really a culmination of various tax laws imposed by the British since the French and Indian War. And one night, after a raucous Sons of Liberty meeting, some members dressed as Native Americans and they went yelling and screaming through the streets of Boston. They boarded some British ships and for the next three hours started to dump around 350 chests of British tea overboard in protest of the Tea Act. And the Boston Tea Party had happened. Now, the big effect of the tea Boston Tea Party is that England is appalled at this flagrant display of disobedience by the colonies. And they pass their harshest acts yet, known as the Coercive Acts, which takes away the colonial Massachusetts government. So the picture here is of the old state house in Boston, meaning the Massachusetts government that met here couldn't meet here anymore. And they put the state of Massachusetts, or the colony of Massachusetts, under British Army rule. Well, this only serves to further enrage the colonists, and a mere three years from now, a full-blown American Revolution will be underway.